oh hi, didn't see you come in. Now whenever you buy a new camera, the chances are, unless it's a very expensive one, that you'll get a lens like this with it. This is a typical little 18 to 55 mm kit lens. It's very small, it's cheap, and it even has image stabilization to help you with video work or getting sharper images. But you soon start to notice problems. It only has a maximum aperture of f3.5 to 5.6, so it doesn't let in much light. It gets darker as you zoom in, as you can see here. So you often have to use a high ISO on your camera, and so your pictures often look a bit grainy. Maybe you've seen that the pictures you take indoors or at night time come out a bit blurry. And the other thing is that you can't get an out-of-focus background very easily, precisely because of that narrow aperture. And in terms of image quality, the lens isn't too bad, but perhaps you've noticed that it's not the sharpest lens out there. And in terms of the autofocus, obviously it's not very good at all. So for whatever reason you've decided to upgrade from your little kit lens, the way I see it is that you have three different options. Number one, you could go for a lens with a much longer zoom range, something that zooms in and out far more. Uh, a super zoom lens, if you will. Those are really, really popular because they're nice and versatile and they're simple and that way you can just have one lens in your bag to do, you know, most of the jobs you want to do. Your second option is to go for a fast standard zoom lens. Now this is a lens with the same focal range as your kit lens, about 17 to 50 millimeter, but it lets in a lot more light Tend, they tend to have much better picture quality and they can also give you a much more out of focus background. So that's a good option for a more serious photographer or if you want to do some more creative work and a lot of professional photographers tend to have fast standard zoom lenses. Now your third option is to get a prime lens. A prime lens doesn't zoom in or out at all. So it's a bit more work and you have to move forward and backwards to get your shot properly framed. But prime lenses tend to be the fastest lenses. They have the widest aperture, they let in the most light. So they're really good for shooting in the dark and also they're really, really good for getting a really blurry out of focus background. So getting a prime lens at 35 mm, 50, whatever, um, is probably your most creative option, but the hardest option as well. So let's take a look at those three options. Option one, the super zoom lens. This is a fun and easy option because you'll be upgrading to a lens which can zoom in and out much further. The only problem is that lenses with a long zoom range, let's say 18 to 200 millimeter, are harder to design and so they're often not the sharpest lenses in the world. Also, they don't let in much light, normally having a maximum aperture of f3.5 to 5.6, so they're not the most creative lenses out there and you can't get such an out of focus background, but they sure are convenient. My personal recommendation, try the Canon 15-85mm f3.5-5.6 IS USM. Its widest angle of 15mm is a much wider angle than any other super zoom lens, although it doesn't zoom in quite as far. 85mm isn't the most telephoto focal length. But the lens is built amazingly well, it has very fast, silent autofocus and its image stabilisation is really good too. And the sharpness and image quality of the lens is very good indeed. To see my full review of the lens, click on the link below or in the description. If I were to go travelling with just one camera lens, then this would be the one. However, it is a little expensive. If you want something a little cheaper that can actually zoom in a lot further, then you might like to try the new Canon 18-135mm IS STM lens. It has to be the new STM version because that has better autofocus and also it has better picture quality, or so I've heard. It also has image stabilisation and it can zoom in all the way to 135mm which is a much more telephoto focal length than 85. It also has pretty good picture quality but not quite as good as the 15 to 85mm. Uh, it won't be quite as sharp and it's, it's not built quite as well. I've got a review of that lens coming a bit later in the year. Another good option, if you want a lens that can really zoom in as long as possible, is the new Sigma 18-200mm OS HSM-C. 
It has to be the new C version. Now, one or two of you might be thinking, why am I recommending a lens that hasn't even come out yet? Well, the reason why is that its predecessor was one of the best super zoom lenses around. Sigma are the guys on the market at the moment who are really still making super zoom lenses and releasing new ones. And this new one has got a new optical formula, so it should be actually pretty sharp. And also it's much smaller and uh, it looks pretty classy as well. It's got nice autofocus and image stabilization. That is going to be a fantastic lens. Your second option is to get a fast standard zoom lens. This gives you the same focal length as your kit lens, well almost, however the picture quality and build quality tends to be better and the maximum aperture of f2.8 lets in more light, which gives you a more out of focus background. This is my preference because I love getting sharper pictures and blurry backgrounds. The lens I most often recommend to people is the Sigma 17-50mm f2.8 OS HSM. That's because it offers excellent picture quality at a very reasonable price. To see my full review of the lens, click on the link below or in the description. It's image stabilised and works very nicely for, well, just about anything. Canon also make an excellent 17-55mm f2.8 IS USM lens, which is very slightly better than the Sigma in terms of picture quality, and it also has slightly nicer autofocus, but it costs an absolute fortune, so it's poor value for money. To see my full review of that lens, click on the link below or in the description. It's also image stabilised and it's a huge lens, so it's not the easiest thing to carry around with you. One more very interesting lens is the Sigma 18-35mm f1.8 HSM. It only has a narrow zoom range of 18-35mm, which is even less than your kit lens but it offers incredible build quality and picture quality and it has an extremely wide maximum aperture of f1.8 that means it lets in absolutely tons of light so it's great for shooting indoors or anywhere else that's dark an f1.8 aperture can also give you a very blurry background indeed for very creative shots to see my full review of that lens well you know what to do by now the only problem is that the lens is big and heavy, it's not cheap, and it doesn't have image stabilisation. And the 18-35mm to focal length is a bit limited. But everything else about it is amazing. It's the lens that I happen to use myself. If you'd like to know a little more about fast standard zoom lenses, check out my reviews of them. Or check out my fast standard zoom lens comparison video by clicking on the link below. It looks at four of the most popular fast standard zoom lenses available. It's always good to get to know the lens you're thinking of buying. Finally, your third option is to use a prime lens, one that doesn't zoom in or out at all. That's the hardest option, but it can also be the most creatively rewarding. They often have the best sharpness and image quality, and they can be at very wide apertures, letting in lots of light. Lots of people like to get a fast 50mm lens, like this 50mm f1.8. They're super cheap and give you a very blurry background indeed. But 50mm is such a zoomed in focal length on most digital cameras that you won't be able to get any wide angle pictures. It's too zoomed in, which just isn't very versatile. Ideally, you should try a lens with a focal length of about 24 to 40 mm. That way, your pictures will be wide enough to get the bigger picture, but still zoomed in enough to emphasize your subject. The Canon 40 mm f2.8 STM pancake lens is a lovely example. To see my full review of that lens, click below. It's very good value for money, and it has fantastic picture quality, and it's extremely portable. However, the maximum aperture of f2.8 isn't particularly impressive. One other popular lens is the Sigma 30mm f1.4. This is an older lens now, with a fantastic maximum aperture of f1.4. That means it lets in tons of light and can give you a very blurry background. It's built well and it's pretty inexpensive. 
However, it's also a pretty soft camera lens, so you're not getting the best picture quality with it. It's recently been upgraded to the new A version with slightly improved optics, so if you're not too fussed about picture sharpness, it's not a bad option. If you have a little more money, then the Sigma 35mm f1.4 does essentially the same thing, but with absolutely fantastic picture quality. To see my full review of that lens, click on the link below. It's an absolute masterpiece lens, but it costs about £500 or $800. That's good value for the lens, but obviously, in real terms, it's a lot of money. One more excellent option, which costs slightly less, is the Canon 35mm f2 IS USM. This lens has the same great picture quality of the Sigma, but it also has image stabilization, which is very useful, especially for video work. However, it only lets in half the amount of light of the Sigma. f2 is pretty good, but sometimes you'll want a lens that's a bit faster. I should let you know though, that a lot of people who are considering getting a prime lens will get the Sigma 18-35mm f1.8, which I mentioned a moment ago. It has all the image quality and fast aperture of a prime lens, but in a zoom lens. So that's why I went for it myself. I've reviewed most of the lenses you've just seen me talking about, as well as a whole ton of other camera lenses. So for more infos, be sure to check out the reviews on my YouTube channel. I'll put links in the description for you. Have fun making up your mind.